Welcome, everybody, into the Nexus Gaming Series Division B East. My name is Bahamut, but let's introduce our teams. More importantly, we got Deep Waters on the left-hand side. Deep, yeah, Deep Waters with a May, Falstead, Rhaegar, Tychus, Hogger. Left-hand side of the, right side of the map, excuse me. We have Can't Pause, Won't Pause with a Mephisto, White Mane, Dehaka, Diablo, Grey Mane. All right. Twitch prediction is on the Tychus level four. He's going to go in the rhythm. How many in the rhythm stacks by the end of the game? If you know the results, you're welcome to gamble. If not, you're welcome to gamble. What's up, Jace? How you doing, bud? Good to see you, bud. Been a little bit. Uh, Shmoogie Bear, how you doing as well? Hello, hello. Remote work is required. Can't have anyone knowing where I'm <laughs> or pay my Perfect, perfect. You know what? I'll host the first annual convention up here. We'll just do it in the middle of winter so no one can actually make it up here when, when everything gets shut down from from a big snowstorm. But either way, we do have a Twitch prediction for Falstead's level 4. Or not Falstead, sorry. Tychus is level 4. Grey main up in the top lane. Just chilling. You know, step out once the uh, Falster, once the mini wave is getting a little bit weak here. Alright, bud. That's enough. Stop chewing on your toes. Hogger. Just clearing things out in bottom. Marbuckle in, bo in bottom as well. Just activating that Dark Swarm on the Dahaka, but... No drag attempts. Looking over in mid. The minion wave crashing in the fort front gate, but uh, Kubiko is easily able to clear that away. Shoe and Waterlog. Grab this. Uh, no pack camp. Same to be done by Black Jesus on the left-hand side. Black Jesus is a fantastic adult swim show. What's up, Turbo? Yeah, there's a lot of wonderful humans in chat today. Thanks for coming by, everybody. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Thanks for being here and lurking, chatting, considering subscribing. Honestly, uh, September's not looking too awful for what Twitch is offering. If they, if, if what I posted in Discord is actually what we get for September, it's not too bad. It's not amazing, but it's not awful. We'll definitely do the subathon during that time when, um, if you gift five or more subs, you Twitch will automatically gift one or more based on the amount. So I'm assuming like five gifted subs will be one extra gift from Twitch. Ten is two. Fifteen is three. I, I just assume it's increments of five go up by one. So I thought that'd be good for the subathon. So you know, you subscribe with five, and you're technically putting in six. Thought that'd be beneficial for everybody. Did I hear Black Jesus? Yeah, it was literally... Hogger is Black Jesus. There's also a TV show called that. It's pretty funny. Thank you for the HOTS content. Well, thanks for being here. Apple Cider Vinegar keeps the dog from chewing her paws. Uh, no, it's not that big of a deal. It's just he... Uh, the first hour of stream, usually, hour to two hours, band is just bored. Um, cause we've been going for walks and playing around in the house, so it's just that chill out time. So he sometimes will sit there and chew on his, it's not his, it's not really, he's not really chewing on his paws. He is, uh, it's his duo claw that he's, he's chewing on. And I'll look over and he's like yanking the hell on it. So I'm just like, please, you're going to rip it out of your skin. But, I mean, it's never really been a problem. And then the licking is just, he can get a little obsessed with his licking to the point where he can rub his, uh the edge of his jaw raw. He's done that before, so. Thank you for the recommendation, though. I appreciate it, but it's not that big of a deal. I just have to catch him here and there. And I can usually see in this side of my eye, because uh, he's just to the right of me, so I can see uh, the corner of my eye when he's doing it. Subzul rules. Nice icing from the May right there. Locks down Diablo, and they find the first kill of the game into the Lord of Terror. 42 souls, so he will not be spawning anytime soon. Yeah, 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 that's, that's, uh, it's not that bad. It's, it's just, um, it's that border collie in him where it can get, like, a little, you can just get, like, obsessed with it. And that's literally, I even talked to the vet, he's just like, yeah, just pay attention, dude. I read that Twitch is raising the price of the level one subs from 490, from 490, uh, 499 euro to 649 euro. I mean, in the United States, it's already happened. Subs in the United States costs uh, 599 now. 
and it's going to increase to $7.99 via mobile. Because uh, Google Play and Apple Store need their extra dollar. I mean, it was like that in the past, to be honest, though. When it was $4.99, you would pay $5.99 on mobile. Now it's literally the same. People are are so confused by it. It's like, this is how it's always been. It's always been a dollar more through mobile. Oh, good jump in from the Mephisto. Gets the kill onto that hogger right there. You can skip it? Yeah, you can just literally sub via desktop. That's why I actively never encourage anyone to gift or sub via their phone. Because you are giving Apple or Google or whomever an extra dollar that they don't deserve. For no reason. A little hammer rank thrown out right there. It is auto attack build for our false stab. We do have 53 stacks for our Tychus. Looks like we got odds on the prediction. I wasn't paying attention while that was closing out, so thank you everyone who did participate. There's the cleanse onto Diablo from the intercession level 7 of White Mane activated. Mephisto jumps in. Lightning Nova. Also, if you have any mobile subs, cancel them and resub through desktop. I actually saw a really cool thing that someone did. Um, so in your Twitch panels, you can have like your Instagram, whatever links. You can actually make a sub link through desktop. So it actually takes people from the, on their phones to the desktop version of Twitch. So I need to set that up as well for myself. So that way people have that access if they're on mobile. But yeah, I mean, my, my, my sub count has definitely gone down. Um, we still have good gifted subs and stuff like that, but my sub count's gone down a little bit because I think a lot of people are subbing less because of the extra dollar. I mean, it does add up. I mean, you got 20 subs, you're paying 20 extra dollars a month. Now, I am still getting 60-40 split, so there's that at least. I'm still getting a 60-40 split of said $6, but um, because of the uh, partner plus that we have, our little PP. That's what you're talking about? Either way, we have our Impaler, or the Null Pack Camp in mid pushing up. Mephisto with 30 stacks on his unyielding power level 1. Overpower, Shadow Charge, Cryo Freeze activated by the May. Throws down a little snowball right there, a little snow blind. Trying to work her way back to safety of the Fort Front Gate. Blizzard down onto the minion wave and a few enemies. Icing from May as well. Still, still picking up skull missile stacks in this mid lane wave up to 34 now of the 40 60 stacks for the in the rhythm on the tychus Time for some action. Let's free our soldiers and take the fight to the What's up last how you doing a turbo I put Baja some of my budgetary calculations Wow, that is very generous of you thank you seriously thank you that's <laughs> that's really generous Staggering blow from Hogger. Easy throw dynamites out. Nice drag from Dahaka into the Hogger. Black Jesus is going to get the Ancestral. It looks for the bounce. Goes right through the Ice Wall of May because that makes complete sense. Yeah, ice Wall. Oh, Hogger bounce interaction. So interesting. I mean, like, I can see not having Hogger bounce inside the Entomb, but not bouncing off the Ice Wall is kind of confusing to me, honestly. But, eh, it is what it is. Whatever. I don't think Hogger can't bounce off of Tassadar Wall, can he? I don't actually know. Does anyone in chat know? You had a fantastic Hawaii restaurant for lunch. What'd you get? He does go through Tassadar, and yeah, I knew the Nazebo wall. I wasn't sure about Tassadar, though. So I know Diablo can Shadow Charge into that. So, it, you know, just Heroes of Storm and, and very, very clear and concise interactions. But weren't the subs increased last month, so desktop is six? Yes, yeah, but it's $7 on mobile now is what we're talking about. I actually don't think the sub increase has happened around the world yet. Right? Because I think someone was mentioning that the EU prices are going up now. So I think the rollout happens... I don't know. Maybe it's a slower rollout, or maybe there's EU laws they had to figure out so they didn't get sued. 
because there's better laws in the EU to protect the uh, protect users and employees and etc. My phone still says six. It might have, maybe it's not rolled out yet. I mean, it, it's literally, it was like yesterday or today I've been seeing a bunch of it. So they might have announced it, but it's maybe not rolled out. That's a possibility. I'm not 100% sure. I, I didn't follow it too closely. Ice wall from May onto, I think, the, just the Diablo. I don't know if Waterlog got caught in there as well. Dirt's a pay from Mephisto going out onto this Rhaegar. The Hogger does go down first as Big Gator has that minigun active trying to get more stackage for our Twitch gamble here. Chunking into that Mephisto as he does go down, but that's Falstad finding that kill. As the Shadow Charge from Diablo trying to initiate some damage into Falstad as Marbuckle looks for the drag, lands it onto Falstad. He's giga dead. Uh, we don't we don't need to we don't need to rush into making a thing a command or anything like that I already have enough commands in my channel that people don't use chicken katsu sandwich with a uh, chicken teriyaki bowl Ooh, that sounds delicious uh, I was reading twitch chat and thinking about food as Diablo souls are gonna be consumed in top lane he does go down to this uh, dive of Tychus Rhaegar and May. Objective phase, this is number two. If you're wondering, we know this because there's 40 seconds of channel time. Also, there's one, two, three jailers available. First is two jailer defenders, second is three, and fourth or third onward is four jailers as we have Diablo once again coming in with the Shadow Charge. Beautiful gust from Falstead, creating a bit of space. Support main is gonna be able to back away to safety, get some chain uh, some heals out as well. Quiet time might be having some quiet time in the Hall of Storms. Falstad taken down as Diablo Shadow charges in. Do have White Mane activating her divine er, Scar Scarlet Egg, excuse me. And Falstad Tychus do go down. 126 stacks for our Tychus player here. Uh, maybe I should have raised the amount. I thought 169 was going to be a good meme amount, but maybe I should have gone to 200 because we're getting close to that uh, Twitch prediction. Wow, my command isn't working anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in the US, so the price increase was last month. Yeah, yeah. I I got a I got a email from Twitch about that as well. Sidewall's being taken out here. May comes in with the icing. Diablo getting an intercession from White Mane. Locker's still putting on the pressure. Overpowered by Diablo. Mephisto Lightning Nova chunking onto some of these health bars, but the chain heals from Rhaegar are pretty good. Rhaegar lunges in for a bite on the butt, and that's uh, Mephisto. Getting a good heal from White Mane, but he's still so dead. No, he's not? White Mane Giggle Beam is going to be enough? Just kidding. No, it's not. Hogger with a bounce trying to close the distance. Good icing from May. As Waterlong is going down and Sister Healing. Might have been a misclick there. I'm not 100% sure of... Or maybe it was uh, the anticipation that there was no Cryo Freeze available. But I do want to point out the objective phase was picked up by Can't Pause, Won't Pause. They do lose a few members in mid. And Falstead flies up the top lane to go clear things out. We have Hogger heading to down towards bottom. Tahaka's heading up here as well. This is, as I mentioned, auto attack build for Falstead. Isolation. Nice barrel roll from Quiet Time. Marbuckle unable to land that. And we'll get some siege under the fort front gate. But look at this counter siege through mid. Draken Laser Gel just beaming down right now. It's like that one. It's like that one. Is it was it a uh, Wings of Liberty with the Draken Laser Drill mission? Into the uh, or is that was that was that Legacy of the Void? Where you're trying to get into the Zelnaga Temple. I forget. Chat will know. Chat knows everything about StarCraft 2. Boss in bottom to be grabbed as the objective phase did not... It, funny enough, they won the objective phase on the side of Camp Pause, Won't Pause and lost a fort. <laughs> so realistically, you should be losing every objective now. So we have uh, Brushstock in from Dahak on the left-hand side. Utilizes his Lurker Strain to try and push back the enemies off this boss point, but he's going to be taken down by Tychus' auto attack damage. We have May icing out. Big corridor fight right now. Falstad, has he got a Gust or anything available? He actually already used it, so that might have pushed everyone into this corridor. Hogger? No way! Hogger gets out with a sliver of HP. Way to go, Black Jesus.
slam from boss right now, confirming the fort in bottom. Is this a double boss call, or are they just gonna look to a hard siege? Is Draken Laser Drill available? Not for nine seconds. That bounce was insane! My gosh. By the way, 159 stacks for our Tychus. Believers for the Switch prediction, gotta be feeling good. Gotta be feeling good for the Twitch prediction. Some channel points to be won here. As a reminder, later on today we'll be doing some Stormgate 2v2 casting. If you uh, would like to participate, uh, join the official Stormgate Discord. I think you can just Google it. But that'll be happening at 1 o'clock my time, so uh, two and a half hours from now. Right? Yeah, two, two and a half hours from now. Until then, we're going to do a bunch of HOTS casting, so uh, yeah. And of course, the Stormgate will be live. Everyone loves live games. I mean, it's not like these aren't live. I got everyone to play at 10.30 in the morning here at uh, NA. Mephisto jumping in. We have the Blizzard down from May. That's a nice ice wall on the three. They've isolated Dahaka and Mephisto, and he does go down. The skeletal nervous system picked off. Falstead gets the barrel roll away. The apocalypse activated by the D Diablo. Falstead finds the flank onto Waterlong, and that White Mane is just getting chunked. She's trying to heal up. The gust to push away the enemies. White Mane is healing through all of this with, like, no mana, and she manages to stay alive as Diablo does go down. Soul's consumed. Oh, oh, that Lurker Strain takes down the Bird Boy. Falstead taken out. Objective phase number three, though, won by the crew of Deep Waters as 200 stacks are hit. And Tychus does go down. Believers will get paid out at the end of the game. Mid lane camp pushing in, but no damage onto the structure yet. White main thighs over chicken thighs? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, but yeah. Except I can't eat a video game character, so maybe not. I can go to the grocery store and buy chicken thighs. Anyways, all right, let's let's focus back in here. We got 20 talents here coming up. Falstad going into Nexus Blades. Actually, that's not what it's called, right? Nexus Frenzy. Since we get some, we got some unique naming for some of these talents as uh, the game did unfold. Ooh, wait, hold on. Marbuckle, no control hogger on a single target. Isolation does connect onto two, but the auto attack still raining in. And that will be taking down Dahaka. Full death timer for him, 60 seconds, as White Man's about to respawn in a moment or two. No control, Bob and Weave, Farseer's Blessing, Nexus Frenzy, May holding 20, but I'd like to see Shatter, and she does go Shatter. Falstead flying in. We'll also be having Blunderbuss for our Grey Mains, so you'll see that splash behind his autos. You can actually kind of see it right there. We have the Hellgate, Diablo, as well as Contagion, which we already saw from the Dahaka. Scarlet Crusade for the White Mane, and the Mimic for Mephisto. So those of you who don't know, Scarlet Aegis bolster the spirits of nearby ally heroes, healing them for 658 and granting them four arm, 40 armor for 4 seconds. The Scarlet Crusade heals for 50% more and makes affected allies unstoppable for 2 seconds. If you did not know, because we don't see a ton of White Mane, and I think a lot of people are very unsure of what she does with her heroics. So you're saying his white mane is has zero calories. Yeah, it's like eating an oxygen sandwich. Great for your figure, not really good for your, you know, living part. <laughs> good cleanse on Dekuiko, throws. Ooh, the ice wall. Gotta be careful of that Durance of Eight that's gonna be thrown out right after. No! Wait, what? Did it cancel it? That was weird, I might have missed it. Either way, isolation contagion onto three. Boston top lane is going to be taking down this keep right now. Hellgate in from Diablo, but Arco so very far from his allies uses the shadow charge to close the distance, and Dahaka does manage to take down May. Top lane keep falls. Two lost. I guess it's a two for one trade, I guess is a better way to put it. Falstead flies to mid, and he'll work through this wave, hopefully saving mid lane fort. I don't think he fully channeled it. Yeah, but it went on full it went on full cooldown. That's the thing. That's weird. That's really weird. It went on it went on like I saw the animation start and I was assuming it would be thrown out right after the ice wall cuz it's a stop, right? Uh it doesn't really specify traps enemy heroes. It doesn't actually say what the status is. I don't think. Hold on one second. 
Da -da 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 -da. Create an impassable terrain. 2.5 seconds. Expires. Traps. Slow. Decaying. Yeah. I'll have to take a look and see. Maybe that's the maybe maybe that's what interrupts it since it's not like a stop like Chromie. Because I think like a Chromie time stop would have it would have still the animation or the heroic would have been used afterwards. I think. Anyways. That seems really weird. Maybe someone can clip it. Dahaka chilling over here on the right. He's gonna see this started out. What is Marbuckle gonna do? So we, we know what's going on over here. Dahaka steps out of the bush, lands the drag onto May. Does she have an ice wall? She does have an ice wall. She can't use it, obviously, because she just got hit with an isolation. Down to 50%. The ancestral healing comes through. The gust from Falstead pushing the enemies back. Hogger with a bounce and gets back to safety. There's going to be endurance of hate from Mephisto, this time actually connecting onto one of the enemies. Scarlet Aegis activation. The Hogger, no control. He's got not a whole lot of HP, but I think he got a chain heal from Rhaegar in all of this. Once again, a, a vertical bounce. Black Jesus getting low. Kubiko cleaning things up. With the Mephisto Mimicry. Falstead wanted the, the damage. Ooh, great Shadow Charge in from Diablo. Closes the distance and sets up the Quadra kill for White Mane. Mid lane camp pushing in again. Boss in bottom lane. I think they can save keep here. It's going to be close. I think it will be. Yeah, with Diablo Grey Man on this, yeah, they should be able to get it just fine. 21 minutes into map number one of the second best of three of the day, and I hope you're all enjoying these games, because they are quite good right now. Falstead had to grab a camp in mid. He did clear out the wave already. Bottom lane keep, as I mentioned, will be saved. It's got a couple thousand HP, 2,916 to be exact, as we also move over to our siege camp. And that'll be grabbed on the right-hand side. As I mentioned, false down the left. Probably going to hearth out for full HP. Yep. Needs a little bit of mana, but it's not that big of a deal. All right. Tychus back up. May back up. And Rhaegar in five. But I think the subjective phase is given away. I don't see a world where they deny this. Oh, uh, well, they're actually rotating in. Maybe they can. Like, maybe, like, an ice wall from Hortipult in from Hogger. Gets one delay. Nah, they, they can't delay this out. Mephisto's got great damage to interrupt all that counter channel. Isolation from Dahak onto two. The Apocalypse from Diablo as the allies move to safety. Gust from Falstad pushes the enemies away. And so Gust and Hortipult were used in this engagement. Apocalypse, Isolation, and Endurance of Hate. Uh, did Diablo use Hellgates? That's not the button I wanted to push. Hellgates down for the next 78 seconds, so I think he did use it in the engagement. A couple autos from Falstad as the Horde Cavalry comes through the lanes. I believe this is our fourth or fifth object. I think this is the fourth objective of the game. Damage raining in from Falstad. Objective still getting wonderful amplified siege for the allies around inside that circle with movement and damage bonuses. A blizzard from May to zone. Earth grasp totem thrown down on the ground. Diablo comes in with the shadow charge support main. Has to cast itself ancestral. It is a stopped status. It does say stopped, which is really weird. Interesting interaction with Durance of Hate on that one. Drag from Dahaka was looking for something. No elongated tongue. He has the Tunneling Claws level uh, 16. Tigus clears that top. Bottom lane fort is down. Mid keep should get picked off here. Fisto jumps in. Can May make a play off of this? Nah, it doesn't look like it at all. So the bottom lane objective uh, will be cleared away. I think the boss in top is available, but they're going to grab a quick fort in top here as well. Nice fire stomp to check the bush on the left-hand side. Mephisto taking out the sidewall here. Dahaka working on the minion wave. Falstead flying to top. He's really, really... He's a little bit further away from his team. Last! For bandits. Thank you for the Prime Gaming. I appreciate that. Fish flopping up on the boat. Thank you for the Prime for 13 months. Thanks for the support in the stream, and thanks for the bandit sub. Nice barrel roll from Falstead, able to get away on the bottom right of our screen, though. We do have a little bit of a low May. She's going to get a couple heals here and there. And Sister healing down for 29 seconds as the Ice Wall from May comes out. And you can gust enemies through an Ice Wall. Okay, interesting. 
Falstad will be taken down in the end. Draken laser drill activated, but no focusing diodes level 20. It is that bob and weave for our Tychus. Top lane fort still low. No boss grabbed on either side. Diablo fishing around for an angle. Dahaka lands a drag. Good cleanse from Rhaegar. Tychus steps up, throws a grenade out. Big earth grass totem onto that Mephisto, but he gets back to his shade origin point and does not get taken down. Falstead still dead for 38 seconds. Tahaka with the Telling Claws looking to make something happen here. He goes for the drag, but lands a minion, unfortunately. Would have been a great drag under Rhaegar as Diablo Shadow Charge bops Big Gator, who has 308 stacks. If you don't know, that's a crap load of time. That is like what? Yeah, in total, he has 12.25 12 seconds since the baseline minigun is 3 seconds duration, and your additional is 9.25. My golly. Yeah, we also saw, I don't, know, I don't know if you caught it, but uh, in bottom lane earlier, there was a hogger bounce that went right through it. And it was allied. Obviously allied uh, May. It's not like it was the enemy or anything like that. But yeah, gusting enemies through the ice wall. That's kind of interesting. First time I've ever seen that. Okay, so... Our fifth, I believe, objective, channeled currently for the members of Deep Water. That's a Diablo discovered on the top left. He activates Apocalypse to try and split the enemies a bit here. Shadow charges in onto Black Jesus, who activates a huge, what is that, insane bounce, that little, whatever. We have the Durance of Fate from Mephisto going out. No control hogger onto a few enemies. None of the health bars are too low here. Barbuckle lands the drag. Mephisto Durance is pretty good. The overpower from Diablo slams May into the ground, and May will lose her souls. And Mephisto, actually White Mane with the snipe, nicely done. She'll be able to take down the hogger. Support main. Nice auto attacks from Falstead. Zone back that to Haka. Boss in top lane is almost gonna get keep here. Almost. Top lane wave is humongous, by the way. Three reavers, objective, massive minion wave. Meanwhile in mid. Null pack camp will be cleared away. Objective cleared away. Bottom lane is pushing up. Dahaka in top lane. He's all alone. Tychus dashes forward. That's a nice earth grass totem. The isolation splashes onto two, but Falstead still has auto attacks. Unfortunately, he can't target Marbuckle because of that level four lurker strain. So the objective phases don't find a ton. If any, May and Hogger do go down. The lanes are pushed back away. Two keeps remain on both sides. Uh, maybe keep and bottom does go down. Yeah, keep and bottom should go down to this. I don't think there's a way you can stop that from happening. These player names are awesome. It's a pretty good teams here in Division B East. Division Beast. So our boss is going to spawn just as the objective ends. They have to know. They have to know the enemy's on boss. They have to. The Hako will show in bottom lane. Show is, show, show is Mephisto. White main. There was a flash right there for a second of Shu. The Hakka's late with the brush dock. He has to pop his uh, burrow. The gust from Falls had to push away Marbuckle, or push away the allies from Marbuckle. Ancestor healing, self cast onto Rhaegar. The apocalypse does connect. Farseer's Blessing, Falstad overpowered, he gets taken down. Global Heroes traded to Haka and Falstad, but Diablo Souls will be consumed as he does go down on the left-hand side to Tychus. Slows from May, Blizzard's there. Stomp, and actually, that, that's, that, uh, that was the boss stomp. Uh oh Mephisto, you're dead. Mephisto, you're dead. He shaded forward, and the enemy just sat there licking their chops saying, oh, all right. We have a guaranteed kill when he returns to his origin point, and there you are. Earth Grasp Totem into the Blizzard of May. Nicely done. Hogger gets a huge bounce through. Water long. A little bit low, but we know this white main player is great at doing 1v1s and just sustaining. Our May is getting a little bit low here. Wants to try to avoid some of that free damage from Diablo Fire Stomps. The objective, but the core is stepping out. The boss still around 50% HP, and I think this is looking like it's going to be GG's for map number one here in Division B East. Over to the side of Deep Waters. GG well played. Our best of three is on the way.
All right, what a game number one was that? Wow. Uh, thank you again, Last, for a Prime Gaming during that game. Appreciate it greatly. I didn't even go fishing. I'm just fish flopping up on the boat. 382 stacks for our Tyke as well. I should have made that way more. Prepare yourselves for battle. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Map number two and our second best of three of the day here in Division B East. On the left-hand side, we have got Deep Waters up in the series with a Johanna, Zul, Jin, Brightwing, Jaina, and our Tannis. Bright... Buh? Okay. Try out something new. On the left, on the right-hand side, can't pause, won't pause. Trying to take us to a map number three in this best of three series. We got a Stukov White Main... Alarak, Garrosh, and Vala. So, double support. I have a Twitch prediction for all of you, lovelies. Um, how many, how much sadism will Alarak end the game with? A hundred or more, or a hundred or less, 101 to 130, or 131 or less. So, Alarak baseline sadism can max out at 130%. You can get show of force level four that can bring it up to 150. And then your level 13 will add in another 40 or more as uh, Pure Malice and the Blades of the High Lord max out at 40%. Whereas Rite of Rock Shear is uncapped, so you can keep building up Sadism from that one. But either way, there are three ch uh, three options for all of you. <laughs> the but that was that was clever from Black Jesus. Like, oh, how do I get into lane easily? I'll just swap Barbuckle out of position. There also are talents to reduce sadism. Uh, there's the level one with the lightnings, uh, extended lightning, but he didn't take that. Granted, you can get your 10% back if you get the triple hit. There's also a level four, if I remember correctly. It's either level four or seven. I'm blanking. Uh, that reduces your ten by your sadism by 10% for a, I think it's level seven for the, uh, do 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 your telekinesis to have a little bit more range and I think a slow on it as well. Might be misremembering, but either way, there's a bunch of talents to augment sadism as we have the fight in bottom lane breaking up. Right wing does go down first. Johanna to follow up as it's a double kill for Vala Sukov. They make it a triple kill into Zul Jin and Marbuckle comes down here with the... D d oh my god! Marbuckle was like, I'm missing out on this sadism. At least I got 3%, but... We got predictions on all three. I didn't have to coerce chat for once. Thank you all for participating in our triple bet. But I do got to point out, right wing with bribe. Is there anything unique about this that we don't know outside of bribing? Activate to consume 20 stacks of bribe to instantly defeat an uncaptured non-elite mercenary. Passively gain one stack of bribe when a nearby minion dies and five stacks from hitting an enemy here with the scent with the arcane flare center. Okay. So the Arcane Flare Center is the unique thing, but I wonder, okay, so if, if if this is being picked up, if Pixie Charm is being picked up at level one, I'd love to see Dream Shot. Because I think Dream Shot will give you the opportunity to hit this center more at level four. I, I, I think Dream Shot is synergistic at this point. And then you could go into Hush later on for not only the silence, but the damage reduction onto the enemy. And if you're trying to hit centers, you're going to get value on one. You're going to get... Uh, trait value as well as the range increase so i think at least with bribe at level one i'd like to see dream shot for the range increase the baseline range right now oh i was gonna show you the baseline range but the increased range is pretty nice look, look at that right there i think it's a 30 percent increase 50 percent okay base shift from brightwing up into the top lane nope it was onto the zul Jin. oh i thought they were gonna try and say black jesus but uh i guess not and the leash the camp yikes Deepwaters just wins the map. Why would you say that? Also, the gamble is still going if the sadism or the build is uh, swaying you. Alarak did go show of force, so his max sadism can be 150. And he gains, you can gain additional, so you can gain an additional 20% from just landing all three of your basic abilities on a hero. So your W, E, Q, in no particular order, within two seconds. Yeah, that's a deal. Additional 77 damage. I didn't realize that one, actually. Anyways, Johanna. 
slowed by a weighted push from Stukov. Vala went into auto attack build. A shift from Brightwing. Iron skin activated. Body check from Garrosh. That was that negative 30 healing. Blade dash from Artanis. He didn't get the phase prism right there as the lurking arm from Stukov activated. But Shu won't be able to chase in. Zul'jin with 200 HP. Less than that. He's got his trade active. And he'll just force himself down to like no HP. But he's got to be giga careful here. As the enemy starts stepping up. And I mean one extended lightning at that point would have taken him down. One lightning surge I think is the... Oh no! Garrosh throws the Alarak in! He lands a nice telekinesis. No discord strike kill. 119 sadism for our Alarak, and if you're wondering where that's coming from, let's take a look and see the sadism breakdown. 10% from talents. Oh, he did go into it! He did go applied force, there it is. So it is that level 7 talent as I was talking about. Reduce sadism by 10%, no way of getting that 10% back. Pushes 20% further and a 20% increase range. That's what it is, there's no slow on it. But either way, we have 9% from takedowns and 10% from show force. So pretty much show force is mitigated. Half of show force is mitigated. Sorry, half of Show of Force's value is mitigated by that level 7. But hey, Telekinesis, that could be what pulls in more enemies for more sadism to be picked up. Sorry, I saw Marbuckle's health getting a little bit low. Johanna gets thrown out of position. The body check applied to her as well. Immortal was gained to the side of can't pause, won't pause. And they continue to push things up here. We also will be seeing level 7, the Sticky Flare for Brightwing. Enemy heroes hit by the Arcane Flare have their movement speed slowed by 20% for 3 seconds. Increase the slow to 40% if they're hit by the center portion. I was wondering if it'd be peekaboo, just, just for that extra bit of shielding and such. But I guess that won't be a priority. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. We got Infested Terran versus the Protoss. And our Tannis takes down Stukov in bottom lane. My company only takes people outside of America to take anti-bribe training. I guess Americans are considered immune to bribes. Huh? I mean, I'm not immune to bribes. <laughs> We have a top lane fort front gate. Gonna take a bit of damage here. Alarak down in bottom lane up against the Artanis. A hundred, oh wait, hold the, hold the phone. Jahana in top lane does go down. Nexus Force is getting that last damage needed. <laughs> Baha active, actively takes bribes on a daily basis, yes. Everyone has a number for everything. I mean, if someone knocked on my door and presented me a check with, with $2 million and said, shave your beard, uh, right then and there. <laughs> I mean, uh, I guess, hold on. I would, have to, I, would, I would have to deposit the money first and make sure it's in my account. Then I would shave. Everyone's got a number. Ally toss onto the Stukov, and the Johan is able to activate Iron Skin and back away. Second Immortal Phase is here, 10 Talent Tears on both sides. We'll shuffle through our num num numbers here, and take a look. We have the Divine Reckoning for the White Mane, by the way. We'll talk about that in a moment. Suppression Pulse, we'll have, oh, there's Suppression Pulse activated. Artana's trying to back away. We do have the Water Elemental from Jaina, as well as Blink Heal, Tostingo, and Bless Shield. Uh, Tonman, thank you for the brand new tier one sub. Welcome to the Baja Mets. Enjoy your ad-free viewing, your amazing emotes, and thank you for the support in the channel. Welcome, welcome, my friend. Does that count as a bribe? The, 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 the tier one sub? Sure. You're just bribing me to, uh, make the next best of Baja. Thank you, Tonman. I, I appreciate that greatly. Seriously, thank you. Welcome, welcome to our lovely community. Uh, what American do for a chili dog and a Klondike bar? I mean, that not that just like the, isn't that what most companies offer up to their employees as a annual thanks for doing all the hard work and making them millions of dollars? <laughs> Phase Prism onto this white main. Blade Dash as well, Zul'jin finds the kill. 
Jaina does go down. 126 sadism for our Alaric currently. We'll check on his sadism. Oh, wait, we might not be having much to check in a moment. Nah, he's fine. Sorry, I misread the, the health bar there. I thought it was Alarak with the Vala health bar. Nice telekinesis to allow Shu to back away. And Zul'jin, he's anticipating that that uh, retreat through the middle part, but Silent Shu, a little wise to it, doesn't go that way. All right, let's take a look here really quickly. Alarak sadism. Currently 18% from takedowns, 18%. So we can get one more combination from show of force. And as I mentioned, half of that is mitigated by that level seven applied force. On the right hand side, we didn't talk about heroics. It is gonna be reign of vengeance. Counter strike as we just saw. Divine reckoning, massive shove, and your warlord challenge. What is divine reckoning? It is going to be uh, consecrate an area for four seconds, dealing 80 damage every 0.5 seconds to enemies inside, and 25% of the damage dealt is returned as mana to allies. Oh, no, no, it's just returned, uh, damage dealt is returned mana to white main, sorry. One million dollar profit equals, uh, one-third Klondike bar. Inflation, I know, right? Bribing for no ads, Poggies. There you go. Ta oh, no, Zul Jin has to activate Tostingo. There's a Divine Reckoning on the ground, and the Warlord Challenge keeping him in place for a little too long. Zul'jin does go down to the white main. Immortal, second one of the game, is going to push in. Should take down the fort here and not get much value into the keep front gate, if any. Maybe one auto tech? Not even that, actually. Oh, do they save the fort? Nah, it's going to be so close. Uh, do you know the average rank of most of these players? This is Division B. Uh, I used to have, like, a cheat sheet, but NGS kind of changes their stuff up every season. Uh, someone in chat might know... Oh, there you go. Last has got you. Average low plat. But that doesn't mean that every player is low plat. I mean, some could be high plat, some could be low gold. That's the benefit. That's the that's the wonders of uh, NGS. It's it's the average MMR of your entire team, if I'm not mistaken. Thank you, thank you. You're welcome. Welcome. Yeah, I mean, chat, don't you want to manage a half a million dollar project on top of four or five other projects during that time and get um, literally nothing extra from your company? Oh, wait, no, no. They gave me um, Christmas Eve off. That's what they gave us. They gave, for all of our hard work, they gave us Christmas Eve off. Some of our European viewers may be confused by that. Uh, in America, we get like six holidays off a year. It's like six or eight, I'm forgetting. I think it's six. <laughs> Massive sub on Azul Jin. I'm not even exaggerating either. Companies will do the bare minimum to give you time off. Uh, Brightwing and Azul Jin will be taken down here. Reign of Vengeance onto the Johanna. She's going to be run down. Man, White Mane, the real assassin of this game. Hold on one second. How many kills does White Mane have? Three kills. White Mane has 100% kill participation. 16 kills. She's got three and 13 assists. Yeah, we get, um, so there's 4th of July, there's Memorial Day, Labor Day, there's Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's Day. Am I missing one, chat? Am I missing any? And keep in mind, if you wanted the Friday off after Thanksgiving to recover from all the food and beer, you have to take that off. You have to use your time off, your sick time or your PTO. And a lot of companies, the one that I worked for, you either had to work an uh, extra time the Wednesday before that Thanksgiving, or you had to take off the Wednesday as well and use more PTO so that you could get Thursday paid. That's the thing. They wouldn't pay you for Thursday unless you did these stipulations. Greatest country in the world. Uh, excuse me, the Counter-Strike from Alarak activated right there. The objective phase looks like it is going to be won out by the crew of Deep Waters. But what will they sacrifice for this? A Jahana, an, Al uh, an Artan, excuse me. And uh, Jaina does go down as well. Alarak, he want does he have the extended lightning? He does. 154 sadism as the right of Rock Shears picked up. This is the 113 talent. Or this is the 13 talent that is uncapped. So let's once again take a look at Alarak Sadism, where it is. He's maxed out on takedowns. He's maxed out on uh, Show of Force. 
And he's got 14% from Rite of Rakshir. Now, what is Rite of Rakshir? So activate to mark an enemy hero for 300 seconds. It's a long time. Hitting a marked hero with Discord Strike increases the sadism by 3%. Killing the marked target increases Sadism by 5% and lowers the cooldown of Rider Rock Shear to 10 seconds. Sadism gained from Rider Rock Shear, of course, is lost upon death. How kind of them, right? Yeah. Yeah, my team in Division A, we have two diamonds, two golds, and a couple plats. See, there you go. Yeah, nice little smorgish board. Nice, nice uh, charcuterie board of uh, different divisions. We got 1.5 weeks of paid vacation in New Year's with the best benefits. Wow, that's actually really nice. I mean, when I worked in architecture, we had no PTO because we legally didn't need to be given any. And if we tried to take time off, we it was we were made to feel bad about it. You know, construction shit. Tostingo activated. He's going to look to back away. Alarak is pushed away by... Ooh, that's not good for the Johanna. She's thrown out of position. Body blocked by the entire enemy team. And White Mane once again finding the kill. Uh, Where is... Oh my god, I'm struggling with buttons today. There we go. White Mane with four kills, 15 assists. God dang. Here I am swimming in PTO. What's up, Pellegriso? How you doing, bud? Black Jesus. Oh, nice subjugation from White Mane. She didn't go, or excuse me, the shared punishment. She didn't go subjugation at level 13. She went lashing, lashing out. But, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, she's getting tons of value from this massive shove. Little, little stun for a second there. Warlord's challenge into Brightwing, and she goes down as well. I earn 9.23 hours every two weeks. That's insanely good. My God. I tried to make a deal with my old company that I like all overtime I did would should be considered uh, for PTO, but they didn't like that idea. I was fine with get, not taking overtime and just having more available time off, but they did not like that. You want to know why? Because we were being forced into overtime constantly, so they would have not gotten benefits out of it. Of course. Counter-Strike from Alarak, no connection onto the Johanna, but she's thrown out of position by the Garrosh. The Iron Skin is activated. Telekinesis pulls the Tostingo, or pulls the Zildjian out of position. Tostingo activated. He's going to get a tiny little heal from the regeneration and then get some blink heals from Brightwing as the objective phase is up and available and Artanis has already started out the first half. No, no, actually, no. It was um, maybe like Vala or someone hitting this first half now that I realize. It was Artanis moving and setting up for this other one over here. Big Gator a little bit low. As we don't have 20 talents, it's even talent tiers for the time being, but a two-level advantage to the right-hand side. Warlord's challenge. Johanna trying to back away. That is going to be Johanna going down to Alarak. 173 sadism currently on Marbuckle. Blade dash. Telekinesis denied. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Marbuckle. Counter-Strike activated. Massive shove on a Tostingo. Or Zul'jin, sorry. No, t I, I keep checking to see if Tostingo's off cooldown. That's why. Apologies, but that'll be uh, 35 seconds left on that bad boy right there. Infirm has been discussing that topic later. U.S. culture has been climb the ladder, excess, and grinding to enjoy retirement. I think it's slowly changing. Slowly, very, 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 like, yeah, it's changing at a snail's pace. We need the dinosaurs to, to get out of the managerial positions and people who actually, you know, want to run companies properly instead of just treating it as a profit machine. But that takes time. And even then, when I thought the engineering place was getting a good replacement, we were not. It went from caring about the employees to caring about profits more. Like, it was it was like 75, 25%. Like, 75% caring about profits, 25% about us. And when the new owner came in, it was like, they didn't give two craps about us. I mean, they, they they did a monthly they did a monthly lunch for us, which was sub sandwiches or pizza. It's like, wow, cool! Uh, all my hard work for a slice of pizza. Wow, thank you so much. I'm glad I didn't pack a lunch today for a slice of pizza. And it wasn't like a good place either. It was like it was usually like hot and ready's from from Little Caesars. So they, yeah. 
Anyways. I got gripes. I got many gripes. Black Jesus is gonna go down as big blizzard from Jaina. Vala, ally toss away. The healing pathogen does spread to her. Cleanse from white mane onto the Stukov as he looks to back away. I thought Alarak was about to lose sadism there. 178 on our Alarak. He does have last laugh, level 20. We'll talk about that in a moment because the fight, an axe donated to the spine of Stukov as he does go down. Our Zul'jin currently with 259 stacks, 51 on that level one. Or that baseline, excuse me. Our holidays are rolled into PTO, the healthcare. You took off five weeks? Oh my god. I wish. Firm culture has changed tremendously in the last five years. The best model came to is just uh, because the person does not want to work as much, does not make them a bad employee. Yeah. Compensation is good measure of the amount of work, billables, and the amount of billables. Yeah. Yeah, no, uh, that's very true, Lass. We had a meeting, uh, a boss brought us pizza, more pizzas than people in the meeting. See, now, there you go. Like, let me go home with some of the pizza. There is no escaping I wish we had Little Caesars. That's too high class for me. What are you, what are you a tombstone guy, uh, Zool Rules? 99 cent frozen pizzas. <laughs> That's pretty much like chewing on cardboard cheese. Toss, Groundbreaker, nice Iron Skin activation. Condemned from the Johanna, Bless Shield does come out as well. Alarak is able to get away on the right hand side with 181 Sadism. But that last lap triggered right there. You just saw Marbuckle's health go down to like nothing. It's a Zeal Mark from the White Man. I thought the Blade Dash was gonna take down Marbuckle, but it doesn't. And Al uh, Artanis does go down. Alarak, he's gonna counter strike. He's gonna take down the Bright Wake. Oh my God, no way he lives. What? Finland! You're a Red Baron guy? Red Baron's good. I, 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 I'm always disappointed with frozen pizza, so I no longer buy it. I always stare at them in the, in the frozen aisle. Whenever I go grocery shopping, I'm like, maybe? And then I'm like, I'm always disappointed. So I just buy frozen burritos nowadays. Never disappointed by a frozen burrito. Uh, they were not cheap ones, we asked. Uh, what do we do with those pizza? He said, some of you drove over 1.5 hours, take it home. Hell yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, with a Finland under their belt, can't pause, won't pause, takes map number two. We're heading to a map three in this best of three here in Division B East. California Pizza Kitchen's okay. They're okay-ish. I feel like they're a little pricey though for a frozen pizza. Red Baron Mexican pizza with some added cheese. Mexican pizza, I don't know. Yeah, you know what? I really want to try the Motor City pizza. I really want to try it because as a as a Michigander and someone who has got very, very big opinions about Detroit style pizza, I really want to try those. I, I saw them. I've seen them at Safeway up here, but I haven't seen them at Rayleigh's. And Rayleigh's is where I normally go. So maybe I just run to Safeway one day and just grab one of them. Yeah, we don't have a target up here yet. There's a... Uh, and this is this is actually... I'm not even kidding. There's a bit of a hubbub about this. So the there's a Rayleigh's. Ray, if you don't know, Rayleigh's is a grocery chain in California. There's like, a, like 100, 200 or so stores. The battle begins shortly, heroes. Welcome in, everybody. Map number three in our second best of three of the day here in Division B East. Thank you all for your patience and talking about pizza with me as we are going to be getting into our deciding match of this series. Thank you, Ash Mandel, as always, for the gamble. Appreciate it, bud. Hey, Zig, what's up, bud? Been trying to reach you about your car's extended warranty. Please don't. The gates shall open. How are you doing? Always going W build. I have the sight of, uh, I can see the future. Uh, and oh, I can see basically what the talents were picked before I, uh, I can see the talents early on. That's basically it. But I could lie and say I have a crystal ball. Uh, Deep Waters has a ETC Falstead, Greymane, Gazlo, Rhaegar. There's your W build, Dishonorable Discharge. On the right hand side, Zeratul, Muradin, Hogger, Deckard, and Junkrat for the side of Can't Pause, Won't Pause. Game three matchup. What is W build? We'll talk about that once we get the lull here after our first engagement. 
Just want to see really quickly what things look like before everyone kind of shuffles off to their lanes. Hogger's already to top lane. Do have one W applied to the Junkrat. I think one stack was gained. No. Because it's not that easy. It's not about just applying the W. It's about sustaining it for a few uh, shocks, if you will. So what is it going to be? All right, so reduce the lightning rod cooldown by two seconds. So that's passive. Boom. Done. After three lightning rod strikes, subsequent strikes, so fourth, fifth, etc., on enemy heroes increase the damage by 1% up to 75. Here's the issue. I believe you only get four strikes for the entire duration. So you, I think you get... Maybe it's five. I think you get one or two stacks until you get the extended duration on Dishonor, uh, on your uh, Lightning Rod. After 30 subsequent strikes, further reduce the Lightning Rod cooldown by two seconds, so four in total. After 75 subsequent strikes, takedowns reset Lightning Rod cooldown. I, I, man, I, I miss the old bribe, man. I miss the old bribe. Old bribe was so much better. But either way... We'll go ahead and see what happens here. That's your Twitch prediction. Does Falstead finish out the 75 Dishonorable Discharge checks stacks? Ah. Oh, I meant to get T out of the kitchen, but then the... the, the I was going to say Realtor. It wasn't a Realtor. Sorry, the Solicitor distracted me. Oh, well, I'll get T after this game. T after this game. As we finish up those predictions for all of you. Let's take a look around the map and see what's going on. We got ETC power sliding, harassing underwater long. Uh, this is going to be the static shield level 4. So lightning rod strikes grant shield up to equal to 4% of Falstead's maximum health up to 28% for 4 seconds. I think the level 7 is what increases the duration. So Falstead's going to be bit struggling a bit here until level 7. But on that note, I mean, we're already 5 to 5 in level. So it's... it's, it's it's, it's working out. The the issue, though, is Falstead needs to hover around within a potentially killable range uh, and ho uh, by Hogger to get those strikes on his lightning rod. Already at four. Let's take a look around the objective. Big Gator trying to get the channel here. Support main helping out. One delay from Muradin and Junkrat. Or a delay each, excuse me. Gush of Mine put on the ground. Explodium charge out as well. Black Jesus with a little turret into the bush. Support main delayed once again. Falstead still chilling in top, but he is losing a bit of this uh, top lane fort front gate. Thunderclap, dwarf toss in, power slide from ETC, a little face melt onto the enemies as well. Concussion mine avoided by Big Gator as he steps up with that inner beast active. Lunges on to Arco, picking up potions from the Decker Kane. The retreat ping is going to be called, but this Murden, he goes right back in. Potions are around. Decker Kane mana's a little bit low here, but it's not too bad of a spot. And the first seed does get picked up by the side of Deep Waters. By the way, did you guys hear Bandit barking down the hallway? Bandit was chill up until I think I opened the door. And the dude started talking about measure whatever. Also, it's it's August. It's August. Why are you talking to me about election stuff in August? I don't even have my election, like, I don't even have the booklet with all the election stuff explained. I mean, I know the answer. I just, I just, I can't stand the political season so much. I can't wait for it to be over. So that way it can continue to be going on because it's never ending. 3,400 to 5k, all right. It's always election time, I know, right? I'm so tired of it. Can you believe the running, the person running for president ate Doritos? Breaking news! Political candidate breathes! Like, okay, like, Jesus. So dumb, man. Augur looked, I think, for a bounce off the edge right there. Waterlong, delayed maybe by Black Jesus. The death laser comes through. <gasps> gasp! I hope they gasp. They need to breathe. Nice scroll of ceiling from Decker Kane. There's a concussion mine as well from Junkrat. Support man getting a little bit low here. Trying to get away. Big Gator is going to be chewed up by Marbuckle. And Junkrat as we have ETC trying to create some space for support main. Power slide will be enough. Face melt to push them back. Chain heal out as well. And the it's one to one in seeds. False set in bottom lane. So he's got the charged up. Increase the number of lightning rod strikes by two. And it's ranged by 25%. That's going to help out a ton with that level one. But no one's really chilling around false set. I mean, he's, he's been split soaking, which is good. They need the experience, but unable to get those stacks that he needs. Wizard Duelist for our gray main level seven. We got the 
Wormhole. Or not Wormhole, sorry. We have the Shadow Hunter. Wormhole's at level 7. Shadow Hunter for our, our uh, Zara tool. Taste of Explosions on the Junkrat with 15 already. <gasps> Can you believe it? The President of the United States wore a tan suit? <gasps> Scandal! We should have a news circuit, 24 hour news circuit about this. <laughs> Gray main? Oh, good concussion mine. Kuko would not be going down right there. Nicely saved. Silent shoe on the right. Oh, looking for support main, but false dead. W. I'm gonna get a couple. Uh... Oh, what am I doing? Where am I going? There we go. Gonna get a couple hits. Ten stacks for false dead. Gust, black hole, ancestral. Go for the throat and mosh pit. On the opposing side, Lornado, Riptire, Hortipult, Avatar, and Might of the Nerezim. Doesn't look like the False Dead's gonna get ganked right there. Greyman a little low on the left-hand side here. Sees the Murden, has to back off. False Dead, doesn't have a whole lot of mana. Gust is unfortunate right there. Doesn't save the Greymane. As Zeratul jumps in. Camp will be stolen away by the side of Camp Pause Won't Pause. Tan after Labor Day for shame, I know, right? Oh, man. The 24-hour news circuit is is the worst thing that we've had. Oh, great ancestral denying the Riptire damage. ETC drops a mosh onto Decker Kane. Is there a Lord Nade to pull false out of position? Is it needed? But the Zeratul comes through with a cleave and takes down the Bird Boy. 14 stacks for a false dead currently. Oh, Lornado. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Support main. Uh-oh. Support main. Can you get out of this? No, there's no way you get out of this alive. Not with that Zeratul on the one side and a Murden on the other. Uh, over in top lane, though. Greymane lunges onto Marbuckle, who's able to get the Horde Apult away. Staggering blow into the loot horde thrown on the ground. Excuse me. As False Dead flies onto the objective. See, trying to zone the enemies away on the right, but Muradin might have a kill into Black Jesus. The Avatar's activated the Black Hole, doesn't pull anyone out of position. Falstad and Gazlo do go down to the Hogger Muradin. Good staggering blow. Oh, I thought Hogger was going to get a nice little bounce through this corridor, but ETC with the Crowd Surfer able to disengage. And our third seed does go over to the side of Can't Pause, Won't Pause. And I don't think that's going to be interrupted. Big push in bottom lane. Holy crap. Oh Jesus! I need to get. I need to read you guys this dumb text message I just got. I'm pretty sure it's a bot text message. So the Garden Terror is pushing top, mid, and bottom. Rip tire. Say goodnight, etc. Exploded pork is going to be found around the battle arena as Murden does go down. Greymane lunging out, but Junkrat's got a concussion mind to disengage. Bottom lane, or excuse me, top lane, Fort goes down. Bottom lane is saved by the Rhaegar, but unfortunately, Greymane still goes down. Zeratul thought he was going to jump in. Oh, that's that's dead Gazlo right there. He gets the Gravel Bomb. He gets the Explodium Charge, but that's going to be it for him. And our Garden Terror with the Overgrowth Plant in mid and top. As I mentioned, Garden Terror in bottom is gone. Concussion Mine into the Steel Trap of Junkrat. Zoning from that scroll of ceiling at Decker Kane, but no one to be picked off. Good staggering blow into the keep. Power slide from ETC, trying to find Marbuckle. Doesn't gain any uh any cease or any stun value. Nice staggering blow into support main. Little chain heal coming out. Does have the Earth Living Enchantment level four for that extra healing over time. Ballstead manages top, so it doesn't look like any keeps will go down, but bottom lane did take about 25% damage. Totem down from Rhaegar, no level 16. This is down 16 talents here. They want to try and find some sort of split fight, but ETC is now being pressured by Muradin and that Hogger. Great Lornado from Decker Kane. 
ETC caught between a Lornado and a scroll ceiling, drops the mosh pit to try and zone, and the gust from Falstad allows him to back away as well. Does have the Encore level 13, so we'll get six seconds off of his heroic cooldown per enemy hero hit with a face melt, but Youch. Two heroics burned right there. ETC does stay alive. And I will continually check this teacup because I keep thinking I have tea. Zeratul jumps onto Big Gator. Staggering blow onto Rhaegar, and he goes down. Wonderfully done from Muradin. And now I want Jet's Pizza so bad. Oh my god. Oh, I want, oh no, Cubico, that did not go your way, bud, the concussion mine. I don't think you wanted to go towards the enemy team keep and take that tower shot, but Avatar from Muradin activated. Hogger. Nice bounce to the right. A scroll ceiling from Decker came with the sapphire applied for the extra slow. And our next objective is up and available. 16 talent here. Still not here for deep waters as Falstad sits on 19 stacks. So Doubter's got to be feeling good. Shouldn't you be gathering that Trying to get some stackage off the Muradin. He dwarf launches away with that level 16 for the increased range. We got Bonk Staff for Deckard Kane. We did see also uh, Ancient Blessings activated. It's like, it's like a little golden sort of call down onto the allies uh, affected. How uh, does, is there a range that we can see for that? Oh, that's actually a pretty big range. I thought it was a lot smaller. It's about the, sa it's, uh, about the same as a Divine Shield range. Concussion Mine set up to zone the enemies. One grenade over the wall. He does have endless nades, by the way. So hitting enemy heroes to delay this out is uh, very, yeah, it's very good for our junk rat. Falstead barrels over the wall. Greyman jumps in as well. The rip tire is activated, but it gets no value. Put on 10 seconds. As junk, or excuse me, uh, Zeratul will take down the Gazlo. Seed number two over to the left hand side for Division B East Deep Waters. And can't pause, won't pause. I mean, it's 11 to 4 in kills, seven, uh, 18 to 17 just about in the levels. Can't pause, won't pause, leading structurally, but maybe, 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 maybe. Deep Waters can start rallying here in map number three. It's the best of three series. Hogger flank on the left with Muradin as well. Gazlo dead for another 11 seconds. Falstead gusts away the enemies. Quiet time is gonna have, ooh, maybe he can get away here. That that uh, that uh, mosh pit from ETC is huge. Zeratul does go down. The Ancient Blessings are activated by the Decker Kane as we currently have Greymane trying to razor swipe out of that scrollless ceiling. A cleanse from Rhaegar will be activated. And Big Gator low, but with the Inner Beast active, trying to continually apply some pressure. Murden Stormbolt not connecting. Lornado, I think it's more of a disengaged Lornado. Create some space, end this fight. Gazlo goes to top lane for more soak. 20 talent here on the horizon for both sides. 23 stacks on our false that he does have this level 13 Thunderstrikes. Lightning Rod deals 25% more damage each subsequent strike, so scaling that up a bit. Of course, 23 stacks of the 75, so it doesn't have the increased two second cooldown. Doesn't have those 30 stacks yet. Maybe you can find it in this engagement on top of this Decker Kane. Power slide from ETC. The issue is they're killing enemies way too quickly and he's not getting stacks. 23 stacks still. Rhaegar traded. Got Gravel Bomb from Gazla. Looking for someone. Can't find anything. Concussion Mine not activated on false. I think he's trying to bait it out. Now, personally, I feel like if you're gonna go Q build, you need a Crippling Hammer at level 16. The increased slow to 50% allows Falstead to stay on top of targets a little bit longer. And uh, speaking of staying on top of targets, Zeratul is going to jump onto Falstead and take him down. Uh, I mean, this Ares Gust reduced the activation to, uh, activation time of Tailwind from 5 to 3 seconds and increased the movement speed bonus from 15 to 25. So you're, you're, sh you're just 5% shy of mount speed, but I like the Crippling Hammer for the slow if you're going to go this direction, just so you can stay on top of people. But the other factor too, as I mentioned, the, the burst value on single targets for deep waters is very high. Uh-oh, Zeratul jumps onto this point. Greymane able to get the channel. Face melt from ETC pushes back Silent Shoe. But ETC cannot 1v1 this. Silent Shoe wins this easily. Drops a mosh, okay. Burden's coming in. ETC does have that uh, crowd surface, so he's able to get away. Nicely done, but he had to burn a two minute cooldown. It can be reduced by six seconds per face melt with the Encore level 13. Did also go into the Showstopper after using Power Slide, gained 35 armor for 4 seconds, reducing all damage taken by 35%. Tornado from Decker Kane. 
So Sapphire on that Haraja Q. Power slide from the ETC, getting some uh, cooldown reduction. That was 12 seconds off his heroic right there with those two hits onto, e onto uh, Decker Kane. Lornado level 20 with the more Nados. We'll also be seeing the Shadow Stride, Rewind for Muradin, No Control, and Cannon Bulls for our Junkrat, which makes sense with the Taster Explosions level 4 and the Endless Nades at level 13, 16. Also did go into the Tricky Shuffles, while Frag Launcher has no charge left. Junkrat gains movement speed. Hold on, Support Main gets the Ancestral, but there's no level 20, so no Farseers. Lornado coming out. Zeratul's got the target locked down onto Rhaegar and takes him out. Hogger will be traded. False dead, low on HP, around 25%, trying to avoid the scroll of ceiling, trying to avoid the Lornado, and Junkrat is able to chase him down. It's a two for one favoring the side of can't pause, won't pause, as they maybe look to push in through bottom lane keep, or, or excuse me, onto bottom lane keep. There's this objective here. No hogger for 42. All right, 25 stacks on our uh, Gray main, he does lose some stackage. I, is it half? Or half of this bonus is lost upon death. That's right. Still 24 stacks on our false set. Went wind tunnel level 20, ancestor healing, farseer's blessing, bomb toss. We've got the tooth and claw. And ETC, death metal or Torbus? Maybe bolt of the storm? No, oh, he's going to go Torbus. Torbus and ETC. Channeling mosh pit, refreshes power slide cooldown, and can be cast. Uh, to increase Mosh Pit's duration by two seconds. And Junkrat, 92 stacks now. Power slide in, trying to zone some enemies back. Mosh Pit is available. Greymane, go for the throat up in five seconds. Ancestor healing up in 15. Everything else is available. Seven to go on a Lord Nado. Get some cooldown reduction, I believe, with that level 20 after it bops an enemy here. So yeah, this effect can only occur. Uh, no, no. Against additional charges. Cooldowns reduced by 10 seconds every time an enemy hero is knocked back. That's what it is. Actually, way more than I thought. 10 seconds is pretty pretty big on a 30 second cooldown. Am I, wait, am I reading that right? Cooldown is reduced by 10 seconds every time an enemy hero is knocked back. Wow. I honestly thought it was way less than that. Okay, so we're waiting patiently to see how this engagement's gonna be unfolding around our next objective. This is Garden Terror available for both sides. No, the wind tunnel, no, false dead. Singularity spike misses, but yeah, false dead, he did. And he's unable to get a uh, level one stack either. Lornado coming out from Decker Kane, getting a lot of blops right there. A second Lornado to be summoned as well. A third one can be coming out and it will be immediately. ETC Mosh been interrupted by the Lornados. This is beautifully done. Huge Ancestor healing Farseer's blessing value spreading to so many allies around. Zeratul jumps in, finds the flank onto Rhaegar. He goes down as Hogger will be traded. A Lornado from Decker Kane is just making this so miserable. Look at those Lornados! And ETC tries to get out. He power slides with the Torbus, but Zeratul will be able to close the distance with the help of Junkrat. ETC. Uh, Zeratul blinks in. That's looking like ETC shall be taken down. And a... Blue team dominated. More Nados is insane. Where's Decker Kane? 20 is infinite potions. Don't at me. Well, you know my position on infinite potions, so we don't have to have a discussion. Boom, done. Well, all forts, or no, actually one keep remains. Falstead trying something here, but he's uh, yeah, he's not gonna be able to do much here. This is looking like it's all done and dusted here in Division B East for the side of can't pause, won't pause. Wonderful back and forth between these two teams and an insanely good best of three series, but GG well played, can't pause, won't pause, take map number three and the series. I've gotten seven more Nados in a single fight. That's insane. That's insane. I mean, perfect gems, amazing. Respect the elderly, amazing. Infinite potions. And so more Nados. More Nados is really good. Yeah, more Nados is really good. Uh, does Falstead finish level one stacks? No, he had 27. He had 27. Incomplete quest. No judgment to the false dead player, but I personally do not like that W build. I don't like it. Crippling Hammer wouldn't have made a difference. Maybe you would have had 
five or so more stacks from the value of Crippling Hammer for the increased slow to 50%, but realistically, I just, I just, I really don't like Dishonorable Discharge. Don't like that build. Not a fan of it. Infinite Potions is better than Fausted W build, though. Yeah, all right, we can find some common ground. I like that. I like that. The W build quest completion stacks need to be lowered, or they just need to delete the town and take us back to the old bribe. That's my, honestly, the old bribe was way better. 